Hi, this is a video to show off converting from a surface shader to a better shader uh, shader. And basically uh, the problem here is we have this uh, surface shader. It's got a little snow function here so we can uh, do some vertex offset in snow and uh, change the falloff angle and stuff. So it's a nice little shader, but it, of course when we get over to URP or HDRP, it doesn't render. So Unity's answer to this is to go recreate your shader in a shader graph, uh, but some shaders don't work well in a shader graph, and as you get more and more complex, that increasingly becomes the case. And so I'm going to show you in this video how we can quickly convert this into a uh, better shaders shader, and um, also how we can take some advantage of uh, some of the features of better shaders. Uh, to make that a nicer system than uh, we have with the surface shader system. So here I have my uh, surface shader. Uh, it's about 75 lines of code, you know, it's much easier than writing uh, a traditional vertex fragment shader by hand. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to convert this into uh, a better shader. And so we're going to create a shader. And under the better shader category, there's a bunch of options here. Uh, I'm going to use minimal, but if you're new to the system, documented is, is a great place to start because it will actually um, show you all of the functions and all of the structure data so you know um, you have all your documentation in line with your initial shader. And I'm going to call this object snow. And I'm sorry, we're in HDRP, not URP here, but uh, same difference. Um, so this is basically uh, how a better shader works. It has various blocks. They're defined by begin and end um, with a, a name. And uh, most of the stuff that you'll see in a traditional shader just maps into one of these blocks. So for instance, we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab all our properties. And we're just going to stick those into the begin uh, properties block here. And just line those up. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do, uh, so the surface shader system has all kinds of little keywords as to whether you're using a vertex shader or not, whether you want shadows or, you know, full forward shadows or not, uh, your target, etc. There's ways to do most of these things in better shaders, but a lot of this you can just skip, like this input structure here that you have to declare with this internal data. Uh, this is so that you can get the normal in world space, uh, this internal data system here. And these are kind of like these magic keywords that they have in the surface shader system. We, we're just going to ignore all of that. We don't need it. Um, what we are going to do is actually split the samplers. We're going to put them directly in our code block here. Uh, and the actual values here, we're going to stick into the C buffer block. And that is because on uh, HDRP and URP, if you want batching to work, uh, then you have to declare all of your parameters in a C buffer block, which is something that didn't exist uh, for surface shaders at the time. Um, so we're just going to put those in the C buffer block, and then we're just going to put the texture samplers here in the uh, regular code block. Uh, and the idea of a C buffer in, in HLSL is that you group all the stuff that might change commonly together into one buffer that it can upload. And then we'll see we have a vertex and a surface function here. Um, let's just go ahead and grab the surface function. And uh, there's my editor. And we're going to go ahead and just instead of this surface function here, we're going to paste that right into here. And the surface function for, um, for a better shaders shader uh, gives you a surface that you can fill out, and then it passes you this shader data structure. And this structure has a whole bunch of things that we might need in it. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to need is we want to sample with the text co coordinates uh, for UV0, essentially. And so instead of using this... Uh, surface shader nomenclature where they name it based on the texture, uh, we do, can just do text chord 0, x, y. So we're going to sample using the, uh, the, the first UV coordinates in our mesh. 
Uh, let's see, then we assign the albedo, that works, and we assign the normal. We compute uh, the snow amount, we use the world normal vector. So this is a little surface shader function that allows you to transform things from, uh, from tangent space to world space. Uh, now this actually does still uh, work. If you pass in the shader data here, this will still work um, and it will compile and, and do the right thing. Uh, however, we could, we could change this uh, on the shader data there happens to be a TBN matrix, which is the actual matrix that um, it's going to multiply by. So I just use that all the time, but if you have existing surface shader code, instead of passing in the input structure, you just pass in the shader data, and then it's gonna work uh, like it normally does. So far, the rest of this looks fine. Oh, so instead of in world position, we're gonna go to our shader data, and we're gonna use Instead, we're going to use um, world space position. So it's a little, I try to be more clear with the naming conventions here. And so we need that in these two places. And this is being sampled in world space so that snow is always down on the object. Um, instead of using the UVs, if you had, um, you know, really messed up UVs, it, the texture wouldn't tile. So that's why it's doing that. And then it's just lerping the albedo color to the, um, snow's albedo and normal uh, by whatever the snow amount is. So let's go flip back and let's see if this compiled. Um, so our object here is still using the old surface shader. So let's just drag our new one into here. Or is it the old one? I should have named these different. This is the surface shader version. So let's just rename this guy so we know it's an old surface shader. And then just take our new shader, stick it in here, and here we go. We have um, a shader here called Object Snow. Oh, did I forget to save the file? Maybe I did. Object Snow shader. Yeah, I forgot to save it. There we go. And now here we have our shader with our albedo normal, snow um, albedo, and snow normal. So let's put some, uh, put the moss on there. Put normal on. Let's give this a snow albedo. I don't have a snow normal, so I'm just going to leave it for blank. And you can see that we have our basic snow shader working now, uh, just as it was before. I can bring those in and out, adjust the contrast, etc. Uh, we have not hooked up the vertex function, so let's do that next. Um, flip back over here. And here we have, so in a surface shader, you get past this app data struct, and you can kind of declare different ones. And uh, again, better shaders just abstracts this all away from you, makes it really easy. Um, so here we're going to do this. We're going to go back to our snow shader, and we're going to add the vertex function. And if you were new to this, you would just, uh, you know, look this up uh, or make the uh, documented shader so that you don't have to uh, remember what this is called. But it's called Modify Vertex. And we get a vertex data, which is our actual vertex data. And we also get an extra uh, vertex to fragment. Uh, it's called structure. Let's call that E. And we want to make this in out so that we can modify it. We could make this in out too. This is basically the way you can pass additional data across uh, the stages here. And let's just um, paste our code in here and modify it. So uh, let's see. We convert the world normal into, um, or the, the normal into world space. We dot it versus the up vector. Um, so this should all work, and yeah, I think this is all just going to run because there's nothing particularly interesting here, and we're, oh, we do call, let's call this V instead because it sort of matches our, our V normal here, and I think that might compile. Let's find out. There we go. It did, first time. And so now we have our vertex offset as well. And you could go further with this, um, you know, adding features, but we're going to go further in a different way. Um, 
So uh, this is fine, right? Like this might be good enough for us. Uh, but what I'd like to do is actually make this um, something that um, we can apply to anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the normal texturing here, right? So now we don't texture anything. Uh, we just do the snow part. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going get, to get rid of this normal main here. And there's two ways that I can do this. Um, so now what we have is we have a shader that is just doing snow, right? And it's going to alert between the albedo that gets passed to us and our snow albedo by the snow amount, uh, but it doesn't have any texturing applied normally. So if we flip back, uh, I believe this will all just work. Uh, yep. Uh, but now since we have no texturing, it's just white where there isn't snow, which with snow makes it kind of hard to see what's going on. Um, but, uh, but we have a shader that is just adding snow to something. So I'm actually going to move this shader just to make the include path a little easier. I'm going to go ahead and stick this in with the better shaders uh, basic examples here. There we go. And now let's go ahead and edit that, make sure it gets the right one. And what we're going to do, I'm going to get rid of this options block, and I'm going to just add subshaders block. And then we do end subshaders. So the subshaders block lets you include other shaders um, into this shader. And if we look uh, in this directory in better shaders, we have one called lit which is a nice uh, basic lighting shader. So I'm just going to bring that in uh, dot, it's called a surf shader. And now what we'll see is that we inherit the lit shader. And again, I probably have to go back and uh, where did I put those assets? I put them in the test here. And so now what we can see is that we have our snow albedo still, but we have this full albedo, uh, let's see, moss. Let's put some moss normal on there. And then we have normal strength and we have the ability to have like emissive mass and we have, you know, tiling here that we can change. Uh, we have all those types of things and I can just adjust the fall off here. Oh, I see. I'm looking from the top. There we go. Um, and so now we've inherited the lit shader and added snow to it. Uh, and so this brought in all the properties and, and, and nice functions of our uh, lit shader right into here. Uh, so we can still tint, uh, do other things uh, that we had set that shader up to do. Um, and so as we expand out the capabilities of the lit shader, we add more uh, functionalities to it, maybe try planar mapping, etc. Then basically, this snow shader gets all of that included automatically. It also means that if we want to add uh, this snow shader to something else, we can. And so I'm going to show you how uh, a way that you can do that uh, that doesn't involve um, using the sub shaders block. So let's just get rid of this, and our snow shader will go back to being just snow again. And this is what I call a stackable. Uh, so I have these stackables here. I'm going to go ahead and move this guy into the stackables folder. And I'm going to call it stackable. Stackable snow. So let's take a, uh, let's go open the better shaders scene. And uh, let's find, here we go. So here we have a bunch of shaders, <clears throat> and I'm going to create a new one uh, that uses what's called a stacked shader. And so I'm going to go ahead and create a game object for this. There we go. And I'm just going to create it right here for now, and I'm going to create a new shader, better shader, stacked shader. So a stacked shader 
is basically just a way to do sub shaders uh, via the editor. Um, so your artists can do them. They don't have to understand how code works. They don't have to uh, <clears throat> to really get deep into the system to do this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add first we're going to add our lit shader. And let me grab that from. Oops, let's not do that yet. We need to go select it over here. We're going to grab the lit, stick it in there. And then we're going to go ahead and grab that stackable that we just made for the snow right here. And then we just hit apply. And this has generated a shader, which is both of those shaders together. Um, now, where did I put this thing? Oh, I just put it in samples. So let's go ahead and create a material for that. We'll stick that on our sphere here. And we can see we have the lit shader again. So again, I can put in uh, my moss albedo and my moss normal. And here we have, now we have a lit. And uh, I can put the snow texture in there, even though just white it seems to be doing the job. And now we've created a, the same shader that we did before without touching code. And so you can stack uh, multiple copies of the same effect. Uh, for instance, uh, as an example here, this wind that you see, uh, actually this one just has one of them, but you can you might stack another one and give it a different twist. Um, this guy is in a stackable shader. And just to show you what you can do with this stuff, um, you can see here that I've stacked uh, a lit tessellation shader. I've, I've stacked a moss shader, which adds moss to uh, things based on slope and height uh, in the height field. And I've added uh, a puddle shader to do the water. And I've added a shear, which is bending the UVs. And then I've added wind to it, right? So you can build up shaders uh, from stacks the same way that you would build them up from code, which makes them super configurable. It also makes your code cleaner because your snow shader only worries about snow, right? And your, um, you know, your lit shader worries about making the best lit shader with whatever features you want. Uh, if you want triplanar, things like that. Um, and it, it kind of separates all of those into different concerns. And then you can uh, create these stack shaders or you can uh, you know, bring shaders in uh, from, the, from the code like I showed you with the subshader block. And that gives you a lot more modularity and reuse than a traditional system. So I hope this video has given you into a look into how easy it is, <clears throat> excuse me, to convert uh, from an existing surface shader to uh, a better shader, and then where you can kind of go further with this uh, to make your shaders better um, and allow them to do uh, more things than they would normally. Normally, you'd have to be, uh, you know, messing with include files and then copying the properties uh, into those blocks um, for each, you know, bit of shader code you want to uh, combine, and then combining all the C buffers together. And this system will just do this all automatically and uh, even let you stack multiple copies of the same effect uh, on top of each other, which can be very useful as well. Um, so, yeah, hope this has been uh, useful and to show off the system. And uh, feel free to you know, ask any questions or give me comments about uh, ways this system could uh, be improved or uh, be of more use to you.